Welcome to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Paint, Rest, Repeat. This week, we are chatting about a really, really, really juicy topic. We're chatting about how to befriend failure and rejection for success as an artist. And Laura and I were actually just sort of writing some notes about the topic, and we were just getting into some really deep and meaningful topics. And we thought, oh, hang on, let's just press record. So that's what we've done. How are you, Laura? I'm good. I am really good. Loving the sunshine that's coming out. And oh, happy new year to our listeners. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Happy new year, everyone. How exciting. Um, We are recording this from just like slightly in the past. (laughs) Just slightly. Um, Slightly in the past. (laughs) Slightly in the past. It's the magic. It's the magic. Of the internet and pre-recording. I love it. I love it. So actually on that topic, you've just reminded me on the happy new year topic. I just wanted to drop in before we dive into our um, juicy content today um if any of our listeners are into the new year's resolution thing into the goal setting thing and into you know um setting some plans for and intentions for the year ahead please feel free to go and download laura's goal setting guide which is over on her website um it is laurajaneday.com stroke free is that right Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> okay, so go and download that one so that you can um, make some, make a bit of a plan for the year ahead. Also, Laura and I both offer mentoring sessions um, and I will not be heartbroken if you choose to work with Laura and I'm pretty sure Laura won't be heartbroken broken if people choose to work with me. What do you think? Of course. <laughs> it all goes around. Like it, whatever resonates, it's all good. It does. So if you would like to book in a mentoring session with Laura, head to her website as well. And you can head to mine, permission to paint.co stroke mentoring to look into that as well. Um, all right. So do you want to kick off the Yeah, theme? so we were doing some notes and we <laughs> we were digging into the topic and then we're like, well, let's just hit record. Um, because we have so much to say on this and it could be a really meaty episode and who knows it could be a two-part series because yeah I feel like this is a topic that comes up again and again and you're always going to be faced with setbacks challenges rejection following this creative path and I think you know over time I feel like I've developed a really good relationship around failure and I think I'll get into that a little bit deeper as the episode goes on. Um, But shall we just do like a little bit of a recap around like what failure might look like for artists? Um, Like I'm thinking, Roz, that Mm -hmm. um, it could be that um, when you're doing a painting, the the painting doesn't um, match up to your expectations. Um, yeah, you feel like you're just not getting there uh, with, you know, the image in your mind and then it's just not working out. Um, or your or, skills are letting you down. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. That could be a failure or um, maybe you make a big stuff up with a customer or posting an order or something like that. Or maybe like a project that you launch just doesn't resonate with your audience. Can you think of any other examples of like failure? Yeah, well, you know what I wanted to do in this episode in our half planning session was (laughs) list out some of mine. So I've had zillions of what people could call failures um zillions of them it's part of the journey so some failures might be also entering art prizes and art competitions and being rejected once Mm. twice 
three times. You can be rejected a number of times from these art prizes and competitions. Um, that's happened to me for, I think I've entered Fenton and Fenton twice over the years and both times rejected. I've entered Jumbled, I've been rejected. I entered Art to Art once initially and I was rejected. Um, the next time I did manage to become a finalist. So I think the rejection is just a thing. The rejection and I don't know if you want to call it failure, but that, mm. I guess that's part of what we're talking about today, actually. Yeah. Is, is it even failure? Like, so what, what is failure and what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, there's so many different ways that, yeah. Um, oh, I we're... just thought I'm interrupting you. Sorry, I just thought <laughs> go, of another go, go. one. <laughs> um, mm. The other one, of course, is um, releasing a collection of work or art on the internet to Instagram or your email list if you're that far advanced and then being met by crickets. Mm -hmm. that can feel really, really painful for a yep. lot of artists. And that is, um, it's, a, it's almost like a rite of passage, I actually think. Um, and if that hasn't happened to you, then I don't know, you're probably actually the odd one out. Yeah, what do you definitely think? a collection launch or you're doing a market stall and then, you know, there was no sales or minimal sales. And, yeah, it just didn't match up to your expectations. Um, yeah, so I think so today we wanted to like I we've talked before, like a part of the purpose of this episode is to normalize these occurrences so that oh, we don't want we don't want any of you out there thinking that you're the only one that has experienced this and that there's something wrong with you or there's something wrong with your art and that's why these things have happened this is so normal like I was saying before it's um it's almost like a rite of passage these experiences and they will keep on happening over the years as well in different forms you know that's just part of being in this industry so um yeah so that was our number one intention here was to normalize all of that and then to sort of workshop we just in sort of discussion form I suppose the yeah what failure means and how to reframe that to help you um to move beyond that and to look at it positively instead yeah I think um we just need to remember that it like every artist every single artist out there has faced their own share of failures and rejections before like the glitz and the glamour and like this perceived overnight success. There's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of personal introspection. There's a lot of uh, mindset work that goes into it. And I think, you know, finding your own path is just not straightforward. Um, so yeah, as Roz said, it is normalizing it um, and making you feel less alone in, in talking about this topic. And I think the best bet is around like befriending failure and rejection um, and like embracing that imperfection and uh, just continuously putting your work out there, continuously doing the work and um, yeah, really moving past those fears. Uh, I think it'll look different for everyone. People will have different relationships to that fear of rejection and that fear of failure. Some people might have more work to do on themselves before they they um they get to the point where they're befriending failure and rejection. Uh, what's your thoughts, Roz? Um, so I'm going to do a little overshare without saying too much. Um, so Laura knows a little bit about my background. But um, the other thing that is really important to work on um, is the basically <laughs> doing a little bit of like background work and understanding if you're quite triggered by some uh, an instance of failure or rejection, trying to work out what is that bringing up for you from your background and from your past and acknowledging that and realizing that there are sensitive sensitivities perhaps in that area um, 
and taking that into account. So for me, I won't go into too much detail, but I've got a bit of rejection in my history, um, as I'm sure a lot of our listeners do. And so for me, even to this day, if I'm rejected from something in particular, I've put myself out there and I've not been successful. For me, I know that I can sometimes have that big emotional response because it links to my past and it, it connects to that. So I only share that because I think it's important for our listeners to factor that in as well not to wallow in that space but just to be aware of that um, and to be kind to themselves as well because your history is your history and the stuff that happened did happen and it's part of who you are today but if you can just connect those dots and go okay all right I'm feeling sensitive because of this connection let's just take a minute to regroup and then reassess and see how we can turn this into an opportunity for growth or an opportunity for the next step or the next stage or whatever it is. Yeah, I hear that um, That being kind to yourself, is a, that's a really good um, tip, like just that continuously coming back, nurturing your sensitive, creative soul in that moment when you're feeling those feelings. And I think, uh, you know, it can come from a background of not being accepted and not being accepted by your peers or your family or whatever that picture is, that deep hurt and um, sadness that comes with from that place. Um, yeah, so it, it can be quite a sensitive topic and we are all feeling like I think that's what is a superpower for us artists in the world because we sense things, we see things, we appreciate the beauty of things we translate that through our art, but then also uh, when we're being vulnerable and putting our work out to the world and our collection fails or we have an art show where we make no art sales, which in fact was on my list of failures, um, yeah, there, there can be some um, sort of triggering emotions and feelings. I'm going to say like I found it really hard when we were uh, making the list before we hit record. Uh, like I was talking to Roz, how I've done a lot of mindset work around it and I don't see um, rejection or failure as, um, as you know, this big heated uh, emotional response or this big heated topic or something that holds me back. I actually see it as a redirect from the universe so it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, that wasn't for me. Um, but I mean, if we're being transparent and listing things that didn't work in my art career, a few things that came to mind was I had a grant re rejection a few years ago. Um, I proposed a, a workshop to an organization and like they come back and they said it wasn't for them. And I, in my last solo exhibition at Kildakin, I made zero sales and that's the first time that I've launched something and put work into it and then I've had zero sales. But because I've done the work, it it wasn't a huge blow. I've done the work on my mindset and, you know, I could see it as a failure, but it, it gives me information on how I can shift my focus, how I can um, do things better. Um you know, when I, the grant rejection came through, like it, I could do things within my control to um, apply again um, and potentially be successful. So it's about trying and trying and trying again, but then also like it could just be a sign that that opportunity or that project or that path is not for you. So I feel like that's, one option that it's not for you and that you need to redirect but then the other option is and how I see this from the spiritual angle is that's the universe also asking you how badly do you want that like do you really want this do you really want to create art and have sell out shows and is that actually what you want and it's asking you and sort of inviting you to question that to reassess 
And then if you say yes, it's an invitation for, to you to work out how to do that. Go and explore, do your research, uh, ask other artists, engage a mentor, tap into your community or whatever it is to work out how to do that. It's, and it's also the, it's the fun in the game as well, right? It's the fun in the art biz side of things like how do you make this work it's like um like an eternal uh what are they called rubik's cube like <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to figure it out <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, are you going to be with that rubik rubik's cube rubik i yep. don't rubik cube are you going to be with that rubik cube um in agony until you get the end result or are you actually going to enjoy working it out and solving those problems you know and i think I think that's a really important question for artists in particular to ask themselves. Like, are, are you happy to be in this journey? Is this a problem that you are interested in solving? Like the yep. process of solving. Are you yeah. here just for the outcome or are you here for um, for the whole journey? And for luckily for you and I, Laura and I, I think, well, me definitely, I love the journey. It's fun. It's interesting. It's challenging. And I love that. Um, yeah. But for some some people, it, it might not be so enjoyable, but it's something really interesting to look at, I think. Mm. Um, I love the uh, metaphor of the Rubik's Cube and trying to figure it out. When you were talking, I was thinking, well, maybe you just don't want to figure out the Rubik's Cube um, and you don't want to enjoy the journey of figuring it out. You want to just put it down all together and play with a different toy. Yep. <laughs> like, so yeah you choose your own adventure like it um it really is but if this art thing is your jam and you really feel that calling in your heart then um we actually have to flex uh that resilience muscle and like b keep building our strength and determin determination because that's what's going to lead to success yeah, you, you nearly said another word then. I know. <laughs> I'm blurring my words. <laughs> oh, so, so, I'm so mature. So <laughs> mature. <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, interesting, isn't it? So the other thing like I've noted down here as well is um, I think it's really easy to say for us to say, like we've been going for quite a few years, right, with this whole art biz thing. So it's really mm -hmm. easy for us to say that failure is um, does not have to be emotionally loaded. It is just something that you can learn from and you, it's the universe telling you um, or asking you what's next. Like that's, it's, it's really easy to say. And so I've written down on my little notes, why is this so hard for us mm -hmm. though? Why is it so hard for artists to go from rejection and failure into um, now this is an opportunity for me to work out what's next why is that so hard what do you think oh we just put so much into it like we invest so much time and emotion and love and dedication and care into our work and we just want other people to love it too and we want you know them to reflect back the feelings and the emotions that you have infused into your work and then then you're just not being seen. Um, it can feel really quite tender in in those moments. You know what that made me little write down and think about was um, uh, a need for external validation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I feel like it's around that, well, the reject is the rejection piece, right? which is a social, I'm really not very good with my terminology, but it's a social concept. No one wants to be rejected because they'll be kicked out of the clan or the tribe or whatever, kicked yep. out of the group mm -hmm. on the outer, left with no food source or anything like that. So it's like mm -hmm. a human thing to yep. need to be included and accepted and to fit into the pack. So I think, yeah, when we when we fail at something and we're not, um, we don't sell out all our works, for example, we get that sense of rejection um, and we don't get that external validation and therefore it can send us into like this almost panic state, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it can. Um, yeah, it can be quite triggering in a way because you're not being accepted by your community, you're not being seen or validated in the way that you you want to be. Um, 
and our work means so much to us as well. It's just um, it it can feel really hard, but I think that's where analyzing and taking an in, invent, inventory of what's going on within your mind, noticing when that fear response is coming up, noticing that inner dialogue and what is that saying about you um, and, and looking at that and then trying to sort of reword or um, sort of rework that that narrative uh, can be really helpful in a way. It's such a huge topic. I've just written down self-worth as well. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like this, um, it's like we need to have the confidence to stand up in this world and show that show the world our art. And it's like this um, like it or lump it sort of mindset. This is me. This is my art. Take it or leave it. I don't care. I'm still going to be making my art over here happily in the corner sort of thing, you know, like it's, it's like trying to separate from this need for the, from, from this need, sorry, for the validation of others. Oh, such a big topic. The other thing I noticed, I also noted down was this gap between expectations and reality being how, you know, being what disappointment looks like and what um, failure can look like. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think um, it's it can be a, a slippery downward slope when you're comparing yourself to an artist on the internet that is like 10 years ahead of your career and you're like, oh, yeah, I want a business just like that. I want to be like selling and um, my art and going to the art fairs and, you know, being represented by galleries or whatever whatever that ideal picture is for you. But I think you really need to have some perspective with around um, all the hard work that has happened before uh, and that artist would have been faced with lots of challenges and they may not share all of that because they've gotten to like some level of notoriety. So setting realistic expectations for yourself with your level of skill, expertise and experience And actually, you know, looking at yourself um, and seeing that room for improvement, but also you're not going to create art and you're not going to create a career just like them. You're going to create a career like you. Yeah. And sometimes people want to skip that part and they just want to emulate someone else and emulate their art career. But I think a lot of the work is figuring out what is uniquely you and what sort of art business you want to like sort of carve out with your situation, (laughs) your particular situation. (laughs) There's a a funny way I like to say situation, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say on our podcast (laughs) because we keep it all clear. Just add an extra H in that. But Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think you are right, you know, and and I think it's almost like finding your style, isn't it? It almost Mm. parallels that. So Mm. you look at what other people are doing, you learn from other people, you take little bits of everything and then you put it all together in a mishmash Mm -hmm. or a combination um, that is you, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's the way you art business. It's the way you make your art and it turns into your version of that. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, that's really, really important. So yeah, because we both have very different lifestyles, for example, and Mm -hmm. we've got to cater, we've got to cater for that. You know, we are whole people and your art business has to fit into that whole scenario. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the energy to be going out, doing all the art fairs um, and producing work after work after work after work um, for uh, gallery representation. Um, Yeah, that just doesn't fit my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a lot of personal introspection to get to the point of like figuring out like, and I'm still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just want to be vulnerable. Like I... I'm led by my intuition. Um, I follow my heart, what excites me, but I'm also realistic 
um, with the amount of energy and output that I have. And my art business is actually only part-time because I don't have the energetic capacity to um, go and hustle and just, you know, um, prolifically create and paint all the time. So, yeah, my art business um, looks totally different. But um, there was a point like a a few years back that I was admiring other people that had beautiful sounding careers and, you know, they were selling high volumes and, you know, their their work was out there and they had great exposure. Um, But knowing now like that, would have just burnt me out if I followed that path and um, I would have ended up really sick and just burnt out and then just not able to uh, carve out a beautiful creative practice for myself. So I think, you know, a lot of this comes back to your why and that sort of discovery and like why you're doing this um, as well. This is like a going, this conversation's like going around into it's everything. It's true, but I feel like it's quite an interesting, I feel like it will be quite an interesting episode for people to listen yeah. to because it's such, <laughs> it's like that deep thinking around, um, you yeah, know, what we're building and how to traverse the pathway mm-hmm. of an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was it's really important to um, be realistic, like you're describing, but from someone of a quite a different nature, mm-hmm. it's also really important not to be self-limiting. So, yep. and I think it's, you've got to be quite careful and quite aware um, of where you are in that space from realistic to self-limiting because, um, yeah, that's just something that I, I'm quite passionate about because I think sometimes those self-limiting things can come up when we're protecting ourselves from um, that fear of failure and also fear of success. Some people that I've chatted with recently, uh, they don't want to approach a gallery or they don't want to put their artwork out for sale because what happens if they receive a request for, you know, too many commissions and they can handle, you know, that sort of a situation. And it's, um, yeah, it's just remembering that, you um, you are capable of as much as you want to be capable of and as, as you physically are and just not to cut yourself too short. You know, you can design your art business to suit you like we were talking about. So you can, you know, limit your commissions, for example, mm. um, and make it a wait list version, you know, so mm-hmm. people have to apply and you just let them in based on your schedule. I feel like I talked about this in a previous episode. I might have. Yeah, maybe. Mm. <laughs> we we were looking at the um, recordings and figuring out where where we're at for the episode and I was reading through the show notes I'm like I don't even remember (laughs) recording this episode so there's like this episode that we recorded like sometime and I just have no recollection of it (laughs) I don't know what was going on I have the perfect recollection of that episode because I was just like crushing on the title (laughs) (laughs) Three power moves to increase, to skyrocket your art yeah. sales or something um, silly like that. Well, anyway. we're in the we're in the past recording now, but we'll yes. be in the, this will be in the future and you would have already listened to this episode if you're following along. So you know what episode we're referring to. We're, we're referring to episode but, number 54, <laughs> says my notes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I got off track. Um, <laughs> yes, so it is good to challenge yourself and set those goals, but it is, it's good to bring awareness um, to when that uh, feel it, fear of failure is coming up for you. Um, so then you, you are not setting those uh, stretchy goals mm. and you're, you're not, you're holding yourself back from putting yourself out there for certain opportunities. The other little trick that can be handy. So say you have an art collection release is setting yourself some goals but not just one goal so setting yourself a base level goal and then a middle goal and then a stretch goal so then when you get an outcome and you find out how many artworks you've sailed sailed sold (laughs) then you will know you know how you sat within that because I think often um, artists are often dreamers and idealists self-included um, and so yeah you as well and so we go up to we just immediately go to that stretch goal without realizing that that's a stretch goal so I think it is quite 
uh, important to yeah set set a range of targets and be you know you've got your very realistic very conservative target and then it goes all the way up to your stretch goal Mm -hmm. I think it'll look different for everyone to yeah and base it on history as well like Mm -hmm. let's not just let's not pretend that you're going to create your very first collection of artworks and it's going to be a complete sellout like Mm -hmm. that could be your stretch goal for sure but Mm -hmm. to expect that would be setting yourself up for um, feelings of failure how's that feelings Mm -hmm. of did you like that feelings of feelings of <laughs> failure so laura if we if we if our listeners were to take away like one key point from this around befriending failure and rejection so they can succeed as artists what do you think the one key point would be just knowing everyone experiences it and you're not alone and um to bring attention to your inner dialogue and feelings around fear, um, failure and rejection and um, just being mindful of that. Like so once we know what's going on within our crazy little monkey minds, um, then we can reframe that and make it easier on ourselves by being kind to ourselves. Did you just call me a monkey? I'm talking about monkey mind, you know, the chatter. Just checking. Just checking. The, the chatter in our mind. Where I don't know where the monkey mind um, term came from, but I don't know. It's just something I picked up uh, along the way. I think they also call it the rep- reptilian mind. I don't yeah. know. Don't ask me. I prefer monkeys. They're a bit cuter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, I feel like that might be a wrap today. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Paint, Rest, Repeat. We absolutely love reading your reviews. So go and leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts or five stars on Spotify. I think last time we checked, we have about maybe 25 ratings on Spotify. So if you could help us to um, increase that number, that would be amazing. It would mean that we could get out and help even more creatives on their journeys. Um, And just a little bit of a reminder at the end here as well, if you are looking for some new year mentoring, don't forget to go and check out Laura and my different websites um, and look at our offers around that. So that's it. That's a wrap. It is a wrap. Thanks, right. Roz. We'll That's put okay. all the um all the info in the show notes so you can click and take a look at our websites for our coaching and mentoring. Beautiful, beautiful. See you next time. Bye. Bye.